X-Men, the animated series, 1992, season one, episode nine. This episode is called The Cure Thoughts. So, spoilers for these first nine episodes. And, yeah, another episode that I absolutely love. Um, support sag -Aftra. There's going to be links in the description box, including to donate. So, yeah, let's dive right in. Let's see. Yeah, so, so Warren says, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to get close to me if you knew what I was really like. I watch Adam Sandler movies. And the um, Wow, Warren shoots first and asks actually I guess he did ask a question right before it's just yeah. A lot of that in this episode. People attacking other mutants like on sight. Let's see Warren's all right. No thanks to your accent. And yeah, um, I didn't catch her name, but Warren's the the woman he was with. You know, fires the gun without being sure what she's shooting at. So I appreciate that pro gun control message. And Xavier tries to probe the doctor, but sees Mystique and Apocalypse. Very cool. And I really appreciate the exploration of the cure issues. Now, ultimately, it doesn't, it's not perfect, but it's good for how much time was devoted to it. You know, an argument could be made that they should have spent more than one episode on it. I mean, it, I hate to say it, but it actually isn't quite as good at exploring it as X-Men The Last Stand. That feels wrong to say, but yeah, and the X-Men use their powers to fix the mansion, and there's yet again conflict between Gambit and Wolverine. And let's see. Yeah, and I really appreciate, you know, without having her just outright say it, because it's, it's a kind of hostile environment to it, the episode makes it clear to the audience Rogue does want the cure. You know, she wants to be able to touch someone and just, you know, just this shot of, you know, Jean and Scott holding hands and, and her, you know, looking, uh, yeah, really nicely done. Let's see, you know, even a child could understand. And, yeah, so at first Rogue, you know, it's just like driving towards the, you know, but Gambit keeps, you know, inviting himself into the car. So I quite appreciate that she, at one point, just picks him up, throws him out. You know, that's, if you don't want that to happen to you, ask permission before you get that close to someone else. Let's see. And, uh, yeah, you know, then, you know, she, she gets on a plane. Stewardess! Stewardess! There's a mutant on the wing! And... Let's see... Very fun when Rogue throws Pyro and Avalanche. Like, you know, just, just a lot of... This episode is full of people meeting each other and immediately attacking each other. Let's see. And yeah, you know, Rogue isn't taking no for an answer, busts down the door to get into the doctor. What do you want? And when do you want it? And yeah, we see, you know, the doctor is Mystique, and Apocalypse is her master. And the. Um, you know, we do, you know, at, at the time, when, when that was revealed, I was like, so she's just been working, she developed all of this after escaping from Denosha, but no, we, we later hear the doctor was real enough until he met Apocalypse. You know, he met his doomsday, but the, yeah, so, you know, the doctor developed it, and, you know, Ro, uh, Mystique, once she was free, went and, you know, took it over to, to use, which, you know, 
like the the um, let's see, yeah, you know, so slavery. The X Men, the good guys, want to end slavery. The bad guys just want to be the slave slave masters, not slaves. You know, so that's a really good message for the kids. And we get the, the heartbreaking flashback of Rogue's first kiss. Let's see. And yeah, the doctor is kidnapped, and then you know, Mystique reveals, You idiots! I was <laughs> You weren't supposed to kidnap me. We were supposed to meet. You know, just yeah. And yeah, and by the end of the episode, Rogue says she no longer wants the cure and yeah like I'm it works but I think it would have been more compelling if it was a longer I mean I, I'm not sure I can really pinpoint when did she change her mind what led her to change her mind in this episode it's just kind of you know well the, the episode is over it's not part of an arc so we gotta resolve the, the matter uh, you know, if if I'm missing something, please let me know in the in the comment section. And uh, yeah, so the uh, you know Warren goes. Yeah, you know, I I appreciate like Warren was like gonna warn the doctor about Cable, and in the meantime, the doctor ran up against Rogue, who didn't want to hurt him at the least. And Pyro and Avalanche who kidnap it. Just you know, it's a it's a lot. <laughs> But the um, yeah you know and and um, we have the let's see. I'll, uh, hold on I'll have it momentarily there we go um, yeah you know I I do really appreciate that it is her choice that it's not that she just feels oh she she can't. Actually, I guess. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. She says, "I am my powers, and the good they can do for my friends and for the whole world." I reckon maybe I can live with that after all. That is an excellent, very positive message. You know, this thing of yeah. You know, um, some things you shouldn't want to change. You know, she's not broken. She's not sick. Right, and, you know, Rogue and and Warren, uh, you know, come upon each other. How do you fly without wings? Life's a mystery. How do you speak without a brain? And let's see. And yeah, you know, Warren goes, you know, he, he realizes, okay, he, you know, he came too late to warn the doctor. Why did you not tell me you are a mutant? Why do you think I've supported your research? You wish to be changed? Is the treatment ready? Are we playing questions only? And uh, yeah, we end on, you know, Mystique and Apocalypse get Warren as, or, or are going to get Warren as a slave because he wants the cure. And, you know, you can understand it. I mean, those wings, like, he can hide them under clothing, but, you know, that is why he didn't want to get close to, to her at, at the start of the episode. I think that might be about what I have to say. Right, uh, the MDB episode uh, synopsis says, Rogue seeks a scientist who claims to be able to cure, quotes, any mutant of their powers. But is he for real? Like, by the 90s, didn't... Is that for real? Like, wasn't that more of a, like, you can't be serious, more, more than, like... Oh, is this true? Kind of thing. It's just, yeah. Anyway. Yes. Um, yeah. More good use of powers. More good inclusion of mutants 
you know, I'll never say no to seeing Pyro as long as it's not completely wasted like an X-Men Last Stand. Let's see. It, it is a little funny to me that a lot of the action, that, you know, it's an action show, of course there's going to be a lot of action, but like, it's not that they're like fighting over ideological reasons, which is what it usually is in these episodes. No, it's like, you know, you you said something, I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> like, just, you know, I, I don't blame Rogue for, for beating up the ones that like try to, you know, it, it's very, like, there's a very clear, like, ah, what's the word? Don't try to, you know, Rogue is, like, you know, female rage empowered, you know. If you, if she doesn't want to talk to you, if she doesn't want to be close to you, don't try to force the issue, just accept when she says no, you know, because she does always say no. She doesn't just walk up to people and punch, you know, but, and, and, yeah, you know, it's good message for the kids. I think that might be about it. This was another episode where the X-Men themselves don't play a really huge role. Like, they're there at the start of the episode. After that, it's mostly... Like, Rogue is the one X-Man who's, you know... Xavier's a little bit involved. But other than that, it's it's other mutants. But it works, you know. Um, the other mutant, the other X-Men don't want the cure. Rogue does, and... It makes a lot of sense, and they didn't give her cringy dialogue like in X-Men Last Stand. I think that might be... About, right, I, I did want to mention... Gambit is like, you know, you want to kiss, and Rogue is like, it would put you in the hospital, and he responds, maybe it would be worth it. Yeah, that's... He's a guy. That's a that's that's how a, a straight man responds to a woman saying, "If we get close, you would literally get hurt." There's there's like I brought receipts. There's proof. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think that right. I I really appreciate like Cable is still like. Freedom Fighter, you know, it's like, I was on Genosha, they, they took away people's powers using these, um, what's it, uh, the, the neck bands, whatever. You made them, I, you know, so, so you're my enemy kind of thing, you know, that's, that's good, and, and it does make sense, you know, that, that's how that kind of thing would work. It's kind of interesting, they haven't really done that in the live-action movies. Like, they've had the power-disabling bands, they've had the cure, but the two haven't gone hand-in-hand hand yet. Like, it makes perfect sense for, for that to be the... Anyway, I'm starting to repeat myself at this point, so yeah. Um, make my model.